Sally, this is Forrester's problem, not yours. I know that, Clark. Of course I know that, but still. So this, this lady shows up at the wedding. What's the worst she could do? When the lady is Sheila Carter, almost anything, you know? You can start with murder and mayhem and end up with plague, famine, and riot. She is capable of anything. She's capable of anything? Hmm. Interesting. What's so interesting about it? Well, a person like that could be useful. What exactly do you mean by useful? Well, she's a woman with a mission and a purpose, and what a purpose. The downfall and destruction of everything Forrester. Now, there's a woman we could do business with. What paper? The newspaper, the one with the article about the wedding. Uh, let's see. Oh, here, wait, here it is. Hey, Sheila, what the heck is going on here? Oh, damn. Hello? Do you mind filling me in on the little drama? Why would you write an article about a wedding and, and not put in there where it's taking place, Mike? Because maybe the Forsters don't want us finding out. We're gonna find out. Okay, we're gonna find out. Now, who would know, though? Who would tell us? She, why do you want to know? Why do you want to go to this wedding all of a sudden? Because it should be my wedding. I'm the one that should be getting married here, not Maggie. Look, babe, I know how you feel, but look, maybe, maybe if we if we went to the editor and, and gave him some song and dance story. Listen to me, Sheila. Didn't Warwick come over here last night and tell you specifically not to show your pretty face at the wedding? Didn't, didn't Magpie do the same thing? She even threatened you. You show up at that church, they're gonna wanna hold a funeral, not a wedding, for you. They don't want you there. Well, they may not want me, but they're going to have me, Mike. And I'm gonna have James. Um, you, you are losing it. You really are. You're coming unglued. Here, I, I want you to make a phone call. Yes. Uh, no, I'll be here for a while. Yeah, sure, Enrique. Um, just drop it off. Is that the new guy? Yes. I haven't met him yet. I may have a problem working with him. You're kidding. What's the problem? <sighs> Major distraction. I don't get it. You will. Um, answer that, will you? Sure. Is, uh, Michael in? Uh, right here, Enrique. Um, this is Megan. She's a coordinator. Hello, Megan. Hi. Here are those notes. Oh, great. Thanks.
So, in your opinion, Sheila Carter is the kind of person we could really do business with, right? Well, the destruction of Forrester, I have to admit, that's a lofty goal. Oh, my, yes, indeed. A very, very lofty goal. Of course, it is full of nothing but destruction and catastrophe. But still, you thought about bringing a person like that into our place of business? Have you lost your marbles? Oh, come on, Sally. She can't be that bad. Yes, she can. She's a walking time bomb. What, she's going to walk into the church and start blowing people away? It's a distinct possibility. <laughs> really? She is wound up so tight she could snap at any minute. A minute. Don't forget, six months ago, she was very busy trying to murder Stephanie Forrester. This is not the sort of person you make jokes about, Clark. This is the sort of person you stay very far away from. It goes double for you. I don't want you to even think about bringing that woman anywhere near me, my family, my home, or my place of business. Do you hear me? Good work, Enrique. Thanks. So, uh, what does a coordinator do? Uh, well, let's see. I, um, I facilitate information flow and... Meaning? I check out going orders. I look for flaws in production. And generally stand around looking lovely. <laughs> Michael! Well, that's a very important job. Excuse me. Forrester Creations. Yeah, this is uh, Weatherly Florist. We have a floral arrangement here for Maggie Forrester and James Warwick, but we seem to have misplaced the address. What address? For the church, where the wedding's happening. Who ordered these flowers? Eric Forrester. He wants them delivered right away. Mr. Forrester... L look, lady, I, I got a job to do here, okay? So give me the address so, so I can deliver them before it's too late. It's Trinity Chapel in Brentwood. Thanks, Megan. Trinity Chapel, Brentwood. <laughs> Let's go. Dearly beloved, we are assembled here in the presence of God to join this man and this woman in holy marriage, which is instituted by God, regulated by his commandments, blessed by our Lord, and to be held in honor among all men. Our reading is from 1 Corinthians. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful. It is not arrogant or rude. Love does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in the wrong, but rejoices in the right. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. For as much as these two persons have come forth to be made one, in this holy estate, if there be any present who knows any just cause why they may not be lawfully joined in marriage, I require him now to make it known or ever after hold his peace. How far to the chapel? It's nearby. Um, why don't you make a ride up here? Come on, Mike, faster. I got it to the floor, Sheila. We're gonna make it. <laughs> I just know we are. So what's the plan, Sheila? You just leave that to me. How can you be smiling at a time like this? Very easily. You know something, don't you? You know, I needed a miracle, Mike. And the miracle was performed. Yeah, yeah, okay. No, no message for anybody. Yeah, thank you. Goodbye. Relax, Sally. Sheila is not at the church. Is the ceremony over? No, not yet. How far along are they? 
How far along? I didn't ask that. Oh, Clark, Clark. Listen, they could have decided to do these handwritten, homemade wedding vows. They always take too much time. Sally, the ceremony is in progress. I'm sure Sheila is safe at home, tranquilized. I wish I could take it so lightly, but I can't. I keep picturing Thorne and Macy in that chapel, and I keep getting this Irish sixth sense that something is going to happen. Honestly, Clark, I get a feeling something terrible is going to happen. I think we ought to be there. I gotta get over there. Come on, no, no, come no, with no, me. No, no. Are you crazy? There. You are not going anywhere. All right? Sally, relax. What about Sao Paulo? I have contracts from Brazil, Chile, Ecuador. Guys, I think I may have made a big mistake. What do you mean? That call before, the guy said he was a florist, but I don't think he was. And he knew my name, so... So you told him where the wedding was? Well, who was it, Megan? A, a reporter? No, I have a very bad feeling it was a guy who used to work here. Mike Guthrie. Dear God, our Father, you have made the goodness and holiness of your creation known to us through your love. Bless James and Margaret on this their special day with a never-ending awareness of your presence in their life so that in the days of joy and sorrow that lie ahead, they will grow and enrich themselves, their children, their friends and relatives by the example of their sharing and goodwill. Be always with them, Lord. Let them know you are with them. Bless them with faith, with tenderness, and with a knowledge that your supreme and perfect love surrounds them. Please join your right hands. Up a couple more blocks, make it left on Bundy. We're almost there. Yeah, and then what? Then life ends for Maggie Forrester. And it begins for Sheila Carter. There's no answer at the chapel. Megan, are you sure it was Mike who was on the phone? You know, I can't, I can't be positive, but, but if it was... If it was, we should call the police. But if it wasn't Mike on the phone... Then... That's why you have to be sure, Megan, because if the police go over there with their sirens blaring and there's no Sheila there... We ruin the wedding. But what if it was this Mike Guthrie on the phone and you don't call the police? Have these two people ever been violent? I think you better call the police. It's supposed to be right around here. I thought it was just off Bundy. It is, Braxton Place. Wait. There's Braxton. Hold on. Great, it's, it's up half a mile. Where do you want me to park? I don't want you to park. What? No, just drop me off in front and circle the block. What are you gonna do? Never mind, Mike. But if I'm not out of the church in, in five minutes, you just leave. Sheila, you gotta let me in on this. You're already in enough trouble. What if there are cops in there? I don't care. I'll go down with you. No, you won't. We're gonna do this my way. This might be the last time we see each other. Possibly, Mike. Quite possibly. Margaret, do you take James to be your husband, to have and to hold, from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, till death do you part? I do. James, do you take Margaret to be your wife, to have and to hold, from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, till death do you part? I do. May we have the rings, please?
I give you this ring as a token of my love. A symbol of my, my promise to be with you always. Our lives are one now. My vision is yours. Your vision is mine. I will love you and share with you all my dreams, my sorrows, my joys, and my pain. Now and for the rest of my life. I join you in marriage, James, so that I may give back to you what you have given to me, the joy and the wonder of a love that was not earned or asked for, or maybe even deserved, <laughs> but nonetheless it was there. of God, and I thank him for that. I thank him for you, James. I give you this ring as a token of my love, as a symbol of the promise to be with you always, a shared life. As Margaret and James light the one candle with these two tapers, may their lives also become one in the sharing of the love and trust they have promised to each other. May the relighting of this candle on future anniversaries be a symbolic reminder of their vows. Vows which, with the grace of God, will remain strong until only death separates them. James and Margaret, because you have pledged your mutual love in marriage, declaring it before God and this gathering of his people, you have by your own promises pronounced yourself husband and wife, blessed by the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and by the power vested in me by this church and the state of California, I now pronounce you man. Wait. No. Wait, James, you... you can't marry her. Shelley, you have no right to be here. Oh, yes, I... I have every right to be here. I'm pregnant. I'm pregnant with your baby.